morning to all. I am Selene Hildamberi from Biochemistry Department. I am going to present the topic General Mechanisms of en Enzyme Regulations. Before going to details, first we should know what are enzymes. Enzymes are nothing but they are the biochemical catalyst which speed up the rate of the reactions which are takes place in the biological system. That is some of the uh, chemical process such as uh, respiration, digestion and reproductive process. These chemical reactions must be regulated by the some of the chemical substance that is uh, proteins which are present in our body which regulate the these enzyme uh, that is chemical activity that are known as the enzymes. Example uh, glucokinase, exokinase, lipase, arginase, these are the some of the examples for the enzymes. Uh, now we are going to see about the uh, enzyme regulations that is these are the content of this topic introduction uh, proteolytic cleavage covalent modification uh, that is irreversible covalent modification as well as the irreversible covalent modifications feedback inhibition as well as the regulations. Enzyme regulation means some of the chemical substance which are present in our body itself regulate the activity of the enzymes. They are generally called as the modulators. The modulators are uh, classified into either activators or inhibitors. Activators means these activators activate the uh, uh, activate or enhance the activity of the enzymes. They are generally called as the activators. But the inhibitors which inhibit the rate of the reactions or uh, inhibit the activity of the enzymes. Example ATP in our body which uh, inhibit the activity of the some of the enzymes they are called as the inhibitors or negative modulators and uh, positive modulators or activators uh, example CTP uh, which uh, enhance the activity of the enzymes they are generally called as the activators or positive modulators. These are the mechanisms involved in the pro, um, enzyme regulations that is proteolytic cleavage, covalent modification, feedback inhibition, allosteric regulations. Why we have to um, re regulate the enzyme activity means in order to maintain the order of the reactions uh, so that the resource materials may not be wasted and in order to make the availability of the uh, nutrients and as well as the energy such as ATP in our body for the activity of the cells as well as for the uh, depends upon the environmental conditions such as uh, presence of the energy ATP or pH or temperature based on that our enzyme activity must be readjusted. For this process the enzymes activity must be regulated. This is proteolytic cleavage which, which is the one of the main mechanism involved in the regulation of the enzymes. Proteolytic cleavage is nothing but the hydrolysis of the protein uh, that is peptide bond present in the protein is hydrolyzed uh, by using the some of the activators example kinase or based on the trypsin the enzyme activity may be uh, regulated. Uh, for example, mainly in the zymogen, zymogen or pro enzymes are nothing but these are the digestive enzymes or coagulation factors mainly they are synthesized in our body in the inactive form. The inactive form of the enzymes must be converted to the active form. Uh, so that the enzyme may be available in order to bind with the substrate that is during the proteolytic cleavage that there is a, some conformational changes is takes place on the surface of the enzyme. So that the active site of the enzyme may be available in order to bind with the substrate and forms the enzyme substrate complex and so enzyme substrate complex is converted to product. Uh, this is the one of the hydrolysis process that is proteolytic activity of the enzyme. In this case in the inactive form that is pro enzyme is converted to the active form of the enzyme by the hydrolysis process. During the hydrolysis process some conformational changes is takes place on the surface of the enzyme as well as uh, as a result in the inactive form of the enzyme is converted to the active form. This is the one of the example that is a chymotrypsinogen is the inactive form pro enzyme is converted to the active form that is chymotrypsin. Uh, this is the primary structure of the enzyme that is protein chymotrypsinogen. This chymotrypsinogen is present in the inactive form actually which, uh, this chymotrypsinogen is the one of the digestive enzyme which contains the 245 amino acids. These 245 amino acids are connected by the inter as well as the intra disulfide bonds. Uh, during the proteolytic cleavage the chymotrypsinogen inactive form is converted to the pi chymotrypsinogen that is the partially active form of the enzyme. 
this partially active form of the enzyme uh, is uh, that is peptide bond cleavage is takes place between the peptide 14 and the 15 as a result pro enzyme is converted to the partially active form of the enzyme and this part, uh, partially active form of the enzyme again undergoes the proteolytic cleavage at the place of the uh, 14 and 15 peptide bond as well as the 147 and the 148 peptide bond as a result the partially active or inactive form of the enzyme is con converted to the completely active alpha chymotrypsin chymotrypsin this alpha chymotrypsin is uh, converted to the three fragment form a b and c these three fragments um, two inter uh, disulfide bond connects these uh, three fragments and two intra disulfide bonds are present at the fragment of uh, b and as well as the c in this uh, through this proteolytic cleavage the chymotrypsinogen inactive form is converted to the active form of the chymotrypsin these are the some of some other examples that is enteropeptidase is the one of the enzyme this enteropeptidase converts the inactive form of the enzyme to the active form of the enzyme that is trypsinogen to trypsin and this trypsin active form activate the uh, pro elastase inactive form to the elastase and uh, the active form as likewise the pro carboxypeptidase enzyme is converted to the carboxypeptidase enzyme and uh, the same trypsin activate the chymotrypsinogen to chymotrypsin and pro lipase to that is inactive form to the active form of the enzyme lipase these are the some other examples that is uh, trypsinogen is converted to trypsin chymotrypsinogen is converted to chymotrypsin pepsinogen is converted to pepsin these are the digestive enzymes next process involved in the regulation of the enzyme activity is covalent modification covalent modification is nothing but the uh, removal of the some group or addition of the some group leads to the uh, inactive form of the enzyme to the active form mainly phosphate group is uh, added in the uh, surface of the active site of the enzyme these are the some other pro that is some of the example for the covalent modification uh, phosphorylation to dephosphorylation likewise adenylation to deadenylation methylation to demethylation acetylation to deacetylation these are the example for the covalent modification of the enzymes this is the one of the example in this case the inactive that is active form of the enzyme is converted to the inactive form when the enzyme undergoes the phosphorylation process in presence of the atp atp enzyme donates the, the atp donates the phosphate group to the enzyme as a result the enzyme is um, phosphorylated at the serine residue enzyme is uh, phosphorylated at the serine residue amino acid present in the active site of the enzyme due to this phosphorylation the active form of the enzyme is converted to the inactive form and again if you are removing the um, phosphate group by the um, hydrolysis process the inactive form of the enzyme is converted to active form this is the reversible process uh, sometimes the phosphorylation may increase the activity of the enzyme sometimes which decreases the activity of the enzyme for example the glycogen synthetase which is the one of the enzyme involved in the gly glucose metabolism the glycogen synthetase is phosphorylated and forms the phosphorylated form of the glycogen synthetase in presence of the kinase enzyme due to this phosphorylation process the active form of the enzyme is converted to the inactive form at the same time the phosphorylation of the enzyme phosphorylase glycogen phosphorylase enzyme phosphorylated and leads to the formation of the active form of the enzyme uh, glycogen phosphorylase this glycogen phosphorylase if you are phosphorylated which converted to the active form but glycogen synthetase if you are adding the phosphate group to the glycogen synthetase the glycogen synthetase becomes the inactive form so addition or deletion may leads to the active form or inactive form some enzymes if you are adding the phosphate group which leads to the formation of the phosphate group in some enzyme if you are adding the phosphate group which leads to the inactive form of the formation of the inactive form of the enzyme this type of modification or regulation is known as the covalent modification the same reaction uh, that is phosphorylase enzyme which is present in the b form that is less active form if you are phosphorylating the uh, phosphorylase b which for leads to the formation of the active form of the phosphorylase enzyme 
and the, again if you are removing the phosphate group by the hydrolysis process, the active form of the enzyme is converted to the inactive form. These are the some of the example for the covalent modification. Next to third um, regulation is allosteric regulation. Allosteric regulation is nothing but the some enzymes uh, contains the actually the normal site present in the enzyme is active site to that the substrate is bind and forms the ES complex and for finally forms the product. But in the regulation process, allosteric regulatory enzymes having the another site and the active site of the enzyme, that site is known as the allosteric site. To that site, the regulatory substance are bind and regulate the activity of the enzymes. And this site is the, um, is the allosteric site. To this site, the inhibitor or modulator are binds to the allosteric site of the enzyme and regulate the activity of the enzyme. The modulators are two types, one is the positive modulator and another one is the negative modulator. Positive modulator accelerate the rate of the reaction, it binds to by binding to the other site of the enzyme. They are called as the positive modulators, that is CTP is example for the positive modulator. A negative modulator if it binds to the allosteric, allos means other, stereos means space or site other site that is several binding sites are present on the active site of the enzyme. For example, the lysozyme enzyme contains the 245, the 12 subunits or 12 binding site on the active site of the enzyme on the surface of the enzyme. To that, the allosteric inhibitor or modulator or binds and inhibit the rate of the reaction. And that is inhibitor if it binds to the allosteric site and inhibit the rate of the reaction. Uh, but positive modulator bind uh, if it binds to the allosteric site with, uh, which enhance the rate of the reaction, negative modulator inhibit the rate of the reaction. This is the um, example for the allosteric site inhibition. End product itself, if the end product is present in our body in the excess amount, the end product itself uh, regulates its own formation by binding to the allosteric site of the enzyme. This is the another uh, type of the allosteric inhibition that is feedback inhibition. Feedback inhibition is nothing but when the end product is present in the excess amount, the end product itself comes and binds with the allosteric site of the enzyme or uh, the enzyme which regulate the first step. First step, uh, the enzyme which regulated by the first step is uh, inhibited by the end product and uh, inhibit the whole rate of the metabolical process. As a result, the formation of the end product will be uh, minimized. In this way, in this way, the end product uh, regulates its own formation by binding to the rate limiting step. And the first step is called as the rate limiting step. To that first step, the enzyme is by, that is the end product is binds to the uh, enzyme which catalyzes the first step and inhibits the formation or conversion of A to B. As a result, the remaining product also um, minimized. Therefore, the end product also inhibited. Formation of the end product also inhibited. One of the example. Okay, example for the feedback inhibition is conversion of 309 to isolation. These are the amino acids required for the protein synthesis. If the isolation is uh, present in the excess amount, the isolation it comes and binds with the first enzyme and inhibit the formation of the first product. As a result, the remaining intermediate product also does not form. Therefore, the end product formation also minimized that is inhibited. When the level is again subsidized, that is decreased, again the enzyme is that is the end product, product is released from the first enzyme and allows the activity of the enzyme. In this way, which regulates its own formation, that type of inhibi uh, inhibition is called as the feedback inhibition. This is the one of the method used for the um, regulation of the enzyme activity. Thank you.